So here's the fossil crinoid material that at Mike Harrison fossils from Instagram has found. Beautiful sea lily stems there, an animal related to the starfish. And we're more closely related to those than we are jellyfish. That's the fossil that I was talking about. And another lovely piece he's got here. Lovely stems there. Oh, doesn't that show up well? Really brings it out. Those lovely little ossicles there, preserved on that flat plate. For want of a better description, look at those stems ah, it really is fun well some proms in mike's pond and here's some ammonites preserved in calcite on this limestone block and there are many different species of ammonites you can find down along the Jurassic coast, when you're looking, all these different ammonites. This particular species here is Promicrocerus, and those are preserved in calcite on this limestone matrix. And these ammonites, you can see here, the Promicrocerus, they're the commonal species you get out along the Jurassic coast, something that you might find preserved in calcite or iron pyrite as you go hunting along the Jurassic coast. I found this fascinating little piece of material from the chert beds down along the Jurassic coast and I think it might be part of a stromatolite. You can see the layering in it. If I just wet it here in Mike's pond, you can see some lovely layering in the chert material here. And the stromatolites were around 3.7 billion years ago. So these are Cretaceous age ones, if they are, but hopefully I can get a very thin slice made of it to see what structure is in it, some cell structure. It'll be interesting to find out anyway. And there's some of the chert bed that it's formed in from down out toward the west beach of Lyme Regis. What's a stromatolite? Stromatolites are layered rock-like structures made by the activity of microbes. Well, we've been looking at a crinoid with Mike Harrison today, a living fossil. And talking of living fossils, here is a nautilus that Mike found on the beach. It was eroding away. You can see the eroded outer edges there of that fossil, the sea grinding it down. Such a shame with such a beautiful specimen here that Mike found along the Jurassic coast at low tide. And he'll dunk it in his fish pond just to show you a bit more what it looks like. There it goes. Oh no! Let's have a look at this lovely Nautilus there. Wow! And the colour's really come up there on the shell now, having dunked it in the water with the crystalline calcite. I think Mike's going to dunk that back in and let that tadpole go. Let the tadpole be released there into there it there it is off and away what a lovely specimen it's such a shame the sea got to that isn't it mike totally but luckily mike is out there saving these fossils from the destruction of the sea they are rapidly eroding away and if it wasn't for people like mike out there in all weathers finding these fossils they would be destroyed by the sea's actions
Well, thanks for watching with us as we've gone through a few of our fossil finds from the Jurassic Coast. There is a fossil collecting code of conduct too, and as long as you don't dig in the cliffs and sit, you're allowed to take the fossils that wash out along the shoreline. You'd be mad to go near the cliffs. They're very dangerous, especially during the dry months when they crack up.